min ayatina ajaba. Do you consider, or do you think, I'm just going to translate it off the top of my head. Do you think that the companions of the cave, wa Rakim and Rakim, some of the Mufassirin say it is the mountain actually where the cave was. Some Mufassirin say it was the dog that was with the companions, the Ashab al Kahf. كَانُوا مِنْ آيَاتِنَا عَجَبًا One of our wondrous signs. إِذْ أَوَى الْفِتْيَةُ إِلَى الْكَهْفِ فَقَالُوا رَبُّنَا رَبُّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ لَنْ نَدُوَ مِنْ دُونِهِ إِلَاهَا لَقَدْ قُلْنَا إِذَا شَطَطَا so, they were in a town where they were being oppressed in the land by the ruler or the system, and they were not allowed, they were believers, and they were not allowed to worship Allah. The oppressor was forcing the people to worship what he wanted them to worship. But Allah inspired them. So Allah inspired them to go to this cave and while they were in this cave, they were, they slept. They slept in the cave. When they were, when they woke up, they didn't know how long they slept, just like us. You take a nap, you don't know how long you slept until you look at the clock or whatever. But they looked around and they were asking one another, how long did we sleep? One of them said, maybe a day, half a day, or whatever. But Allah caused them to sleep for 300 years. Was dad do tisa? And nine. <laughs> Only Allah knows exactly how long they slept in the cave. It's funny because when I decided to give this khutbah on Surah al kahf or the cave, one of the first essays for this semester at, in college was on Plato's allegory of the cave. I was like, what is this all about, you know? Everything cave, cave, cave. When I made, after I made Salat al-Sakhara, these thoughts just started coming in my mind. And then when I went to school, it was like, you have to do an essay on the allegory of the cave. So to my surprise, it was strikingly a, uh, it was the allegory of the cave has to do with people, I don't know, maybe a lot of you read it in college or read it on your own. But anyway, it supposedly came from Socrates, who was Plato's instructor or his teacher, mentor, as they say. And he said, suppose you have a cave where the people there are prisoners in there. And they're sitting, and they're facing the wall of the cave in chains and fetters. And above them, there's some people with a uh, campfire. And they're doing something like puppeteering. They're 
putting these symbols up and is casting shadows against the wall. And there are passers-by that pass by the cave. Of course, that's noise, right? You can hear them. Just kind of like when we're someplace, you can hear the cars moving, you can hear everything. Life goes on. But these prisoners, all they're seeing in this, on the wall of the cave are shadows. And they're get, trying to guess, what is this? What is that? They're guessing. Then, and this cave is very dark, of course. That's one of the reasons why I mentioned West Virginia. Because what? We're in the mountains, aren't we? We're in the Jibab. We're in the mountains. And I don't know if anybody has ever seen a cave or been in a cave in real life, but I have. Uh, we had to go to a field trip, school field trip in Virginia. We had to go to the Shenandoah Valley. Is this the Shenandoah Valley? Okay, so we had to go to the Shenandoah Valley and you go to, what is it called? Natu Natural Bridge. And then we went to uh, Taverns. Skyline. Skyline, yes. Thank you. And um, so, cave is very dark. It could be scary. But these prisoners, all they're seeing is shadows. They don't know what it is. This is maybe that's, that's a bird, or this is a tree. But they're guessing. So one of these prisoners is released. And he's made to turn around. He's made to turn around out of this cave. And on the ascension, on the way up, you know, of course he can barely see. I mean, through when he trying to adjust his eyes to the light of the entrance of the cave. And he sees the people with the fire and they're making these things, like puppeteers. He sees it. He starts to see the reality of what's going on. ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين. This is the book, and there is no doubt. Guidance to those who are righteous, those who are pious. So as he goes outside, he can barely open his eyes. It's just kind of like you wake up and somebody, somebody turns the lights on. So you can barely see, right? So, not until he's brought to some water, he can look at the reflection of himself. And he says, oh, he can actually see the sun through the reflection. He can actually see trees. And then as he looks, and he's starting to see what life is really all about. And it's beautiful, the trees, and that's the sun, and the greenery and everything, kind of like here, West Virginia. So, he's enjoying himself, and then he's made to go back. Or he thinks about these prisoners. You know, like they would say in jail, like they're cellmates. But, He's made to go back. When he goes back, and he tells these prisoners, what do you think they're gonna say when he tells them, this is not really what you've been seeing. What, you see, what you're seeing is just shadows. It's just an aberration. It's fake. It's fake. Somebody is manufacturing all of this stuff against the wall against the wall of this cave. And they are doing this, doing that. They probably are like, oh my God, this guy is crazy. But he's actually uh, telling them the truth. So in this part, Plato has his student or his servant. Who are these people? Who do you suppose these people are? So then, 
He says, this student says, that's us. He said, yes, all of mankind. So, of course, this is like, this is an allegory. Although this sort of calf, it's not an allegory. ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين It has no doubt. This is not an allegory. It's real. You know? So, what we see nowadays in society and going back to the allegory, The meaning of it, it's all about denial and the soul's ascension. When you receive knowledge, everybody had their cave experience, right? Oh, we were born with knowledge. All of us were born shape, right? We never had to live in darkness. We didn't know. We just we were just born and we just know exactly what's going on. Why does why are we encouraged to read this sorta? Just to talk about some boys in a cave? Some youth in a cave? And the dog, Al Rakim, or the mountain valley, Al Rakim. Allah says. It's a sign that is wondrous. But a lot of times we think, we, we really, we're not thinking. We have to look. Like when we go out this door, what is Allah trying to tell us? Look at his creation. Look at these mountains. Look at these trees. Look at the people, different colors. <laughs> So, we all have had our cave experience, even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? Ikora, where was he? Where was he? In a cave. In a cave. And then the angel said what? Ikora, what did he say? Ma'ana bikari. I cannot read. I'm unlettered in the cave. The actual cave, right? Ma ana biqari. It's dark in here, right? It's dark in this cave. But the angel, Jibril alayhi salatu was salam, iqara, iqara. بسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الإنسان من علق اقرأ وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالماذا The one who talked with the pen Right? So this sort of calf It's not just them that have their cave experience A lot of us had our cave experience, or we've all, it's all of us. Ed dunya, what? Sijinul mu'min. Right? This world is what? A prison for the believers. Wa jannatul kafir. Aquli qawli hadha. Wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Wa astaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. I want to thank again, brother Shukri. Shukri, am I pronouncing it right? <laughs> and Imam Amir, right here, who brought me graciously brought me down here. I was very nervous about giving the khutbah, so, but I'm glad that I agree because it's like a homecoming. I get a chance to see the trees the water, see you all, and um, you all, a 
are living in West Virginia, and I used to come here, and I grew up in Virginia. I used to run around with holes in my shoes, playing basketball, going to regular life just like everybody else is. My mother, my stepfather who raised me, who was Imam Shams Abdul Rahman in Danville, Virginia. Anybody heard of Danville, Virginia? Danville, Virginia, that's where I grew up. I went all the way through high school until I moved to the north. So, <clears throat> again, the youth or the boys or the youths, young men in the cave, kanu min ayatina ajaba. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, whoever reads Surah Tukaf, on Yom Jum'ah, what is it? Like Noor, from one Jum'ah to the next Jum'ah, right? Why are we reading it again? Why are we reading it like, again? Just to read about some use in a cave? <laughs> Think past that. Think deeper. أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ Don't they not reflect on the Qur'an? We think Allah is stupid? Just to talk about the cave? And they just went there and they slept for a hundred years and that's it? What is the lesson? What is the lesson? What is this life all about? So, just as this prisoner in the allegory was made to turn around, sometimes we have to pull our brothers up and our sisters up and pull them out of the cave and teach them if we know. Get them out of the cave. Go back and help your brothers. Because a, a lot of times, you know, we get our education, we get our degrees, and we forget about everybody else. We get our good job, we got our beautiful wife, our beautiful children, our cars, our big time bank accounts, and we forget about the other prisoners, right? Huh? But we sit back and laugh at them, right? It's one of our wondrous signs. You have to learn from it. We have to learn from it. All of us. Those of us endowed with knowledge, you have a responsibility, whether it's engineering, whether it's mathematics, whether it's science, whether it's, whether it's whatever, carpentry, whatever. Help somebody. Help somebody to learn. Help somebody get them a job. Go to the prisons and help the prisoners as well. Something that we, my stepfather, used to take me to the prisons when I was a kid, when I was young. And he used to put my suit and tie on me, cut my hair and everything, and we go to the prisons to teach the prisoners Islam. Can you imagine? I'm a little boy. He's telling me, recite al fatiha in front of them. Recite wal as in front of them. Yes, sir. wal as inna l'insan fi khus. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاسَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاسَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ Right? قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٍ اللَّهُ الصَّمَدٍ لَمْ يَلِدُ وَلَمْ يُولَدُ وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُبُوَانْ أَحَدٍ Won't a prisoner appreciate that? He'll appreciate that, right? He'll appreciate anything at that point, right? But the truth, he will really appreciate it like Malcolm X, right? And others. He had his cave experience, right? He had his cave experience. He was in the jail. And he let it work for him. And when he was released, what did he do? He taught the allegory, the prisoners, us. He didn't forget. He didn't forget. He was assassinated for it, even though Allahu Adam, what, what's the nature of 
Socrates, he was killed as well. 20 years before, Plato talked about this allegory to his students. May Allah bless the Muslims in West Virginia. You all are beautiful. You all are beautiful. I'm glad to be here, for real. <laughs> I was taking pictures all along the way. I was taking pictures because I hadn't seen it. I was like, wow, I grew up around this. But people in New York wish they could see this. People in Brooklyn, homeless people, people in the street, they wish they could see these mountains and these rivers and, and be in a place like this, be in a masjid like this. Right? Or maybe go fishing or put their hands in the water or walk on the country road, you know, without the police harassing them or something. <laughs> that probably happens here too, right? So, may Allah bless the Muslims all over the world. May Allah bless the Muslims in Africa, in Philistine, because they're being held prisoner in their own land. May Allah help the Muslims right here in America, because we need, we got a bully as a leader. And, subhanAllah. So, let us help one another and help others, even the non-Muslims, bring them back, bring them out of this cave. Because even this bully, he's in a cave too. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabi ajma'in. Aqim as-salaa. Just very quick uh, an announcement, inshallah. Right after Salat, if you would not urgently to leave or to go back to work, could you please be seated? Uh, Brother Imam uh, Amir, he has a little talk, inshallah, about 10 to 15 minutes. After that, we have a wonderful and uh, delicious food, inshallah, if you can be seated. Yes. Uh, unless you have to leave, please be seated and listen to what uh, Imam uh, Amir, inshallah, in 10 to 15 minutes, inshallah.